What are the lowest effort tricks to vastly improve your visual effects? Well, the four tricks I'm going to show you I used on a recent short film, and these tactics have both improved and sped up my work. Let's cut some corners. Tip number one, foreground detail. So I've got this shot here in the engine as part of the short film that I've been making. And at the end, you see these two brick walls in the foreground. And in my opinion, they just don't hold up. And because these are low effort tricks, I'm gonna assume we don't have time to go out, source new assets, throw them into Substance Painter. We need to do this quickly. So the first and easiest thing we can do is actually change the textures out completely and keep the meshes in place. So let's jump out of the camera view here and start with this wall on the left. In my content browser, I've downloaded a few mega scans that we can apply to this. Each of them has a different look. Some of them have more scratches. Some of them are a little bit smoother as well. So I could just drag one of these materials on. So let's grab this one, drag it straight on. <laughs> Actually does look a lot better. It's an 8K texture, whereas the previous one was a 4K texture. So it's immediately got a bump in quality and it has the benefit of being a real surface as well. Next, we're gonna add decals because decals will add more texture variation and detail. And the more detail we have, the better. I've got a few mega scans decals that I can add. So from my content browser, in my decals, I've got concrete cracks, got some road damage, wall crack, asphalt crack. Say crack again. Crack. So here's the scene without decals, and here it is with decals. So you can see I've only added a few on the wall on this side here, just to break up the general uniformity of it. And these, I think, nicely match the reference that I've got as well, which has some quite large cracks along walls and ceilings. But this is still not done. It doesn't feel ready yet. And that's because there's another thing that's missing from this scene. I'm gonna add cobwebs. And I found a really nice cobwebs pack on the Epic Marketplace, which are just so high quality and exactly the right type of cobweb as well. So once again, here's the scene with no cobwebs, and here it is with cobwebs. And you can really see that difference there. This now feels a lot more realistic. We've got nice textures up front, and any of the repeating patterns or bad textures are being broken up by decals, by materials, and by these cobwebs. So this shot is now ready, and once it's rendered and composited with my actor, this is what it looks like. The next one is a truly low effort hack. Turn the lights off. The main antagonist of my film is the mummy creature itself. And you can see right here, I've got the mummy in my scene and it looks pretty good. It's definitely the best pre-made model that I could find. There are a few shots in the movie where I've got him fully lit and in a kind of medium close and I think that's fine, but I don't want to have it up lit the whole time. So for this shot in particular, just watch what happens when I turn off this top spotlight. Keeping that strong backlight and silhouetting him against the fog in the background just makes him so much scarier. It's definitely a good idea to look at your scene and think which lights can I turn off? What objects maybe don't hold up to intense scrutiny? Can I move them to an area where there's more shadow? Or are there lights in the scene that can be eliminated entirely? Turning off lights is generally good advice anyway because uplighting everything and kind of going overboard is easy to do and it's an unfocused approach it's much better to use lights to direct people's attention to what matters in your story. Next tip is hiding seams. This is a really important one because when you've got a wall and a floor, that join between the two is usually where dirt and dust builds up in real life. And if you don't have that, it's just gonna look completely fake. So here in this scene, you've got this hard seam right here. Everything would just be collecting in those corners. But I don't have loads of time, so I'm gonna use the physical layout mode in Unreal Engine. And it's on the marketplace right here. It's free and it allows you to place objects in your scene using physics. I've got it loaded into my scene right now and you can select it in the selection mode right here. Physical layout mode. I'm going to go to paint place. I'm going to add a few rocks. Add a maximum position, random rotation as well, and a random scale. And the most important thing, place with gravity. I'm going to place loads of rocks just around this join right here and it's going to hide that seam for me. The great thing about this is everything falls in a natural way. And if I go back to selection mode, I can still select individual rocks and move them or remove them if I want to. So if something bugged out, I'm not stuck with a huge amount of rocks that I need to all select at once. And of course, this corner is not going to be in a close up of my film. If this was featured in a close up, I would do a lot more work on this area, but I don't have to. Tip number four, just don't look at it. So you can see in this shot that I've got right here, I have a really nice piece of photogrammetry sat on top of a not so nice piece of photogrammetry. We need to do some things here to improve this shot. 
Before we get into the camera settings, I can improve this bad piece of photogrammetry with a little bit of a material tweak because it didn't come with a normal map and I can definitely add one from my Megascans assets. If I just select that mesh, go into the material. So what you can see I've got in the material right now is something very simple. It's two normal maps that I'm blending together. One of them is from one of the sandstone assets from Megascans and another one is a slightly different one. And I'm just using this node here, which is blend angle corrected normals to make that merge. You shouldn't use a lerp node with normal maps. You should use blend angle corrected normals. The only other thing I've got going on here is a couple of different levels of tiling. So I'm tiling this one by 10 and this one by about 8.4. And I've dialed that in visually just by checking in the viewport and changing those values. I've also added a flattened normal to this second one right here, which just makes it slightly less pronounced. All I need to do for this is link this up to my normal map right here and hit apply and watch the difference. See, that looks better, but I'm still not very happy with the way that geometry looks. So I'm in my sequencer right here and you can see I've got my Scarab cam right here, which is a 28 millimeter lens with a 3.5 f-stop. So it's got quite deep depth of field and it's also kind of wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go closer in on this scarab by using a longer focal length, which will eliminate some of the geometry from my shot for a start. So let's put this onto a 50 mil. And that's obviously brought us a lot closer to the mesh. So what we need to do now is open that aperture. So we're going to go from 3.5 to a 2. So that's obviously shortened the depth of field, which means that we're more focused on the scarab than we are on anything else in the shot. So it's blurred the background and a little bit of the foreground here as well. So we don't have to worry about people getting distracted by any poor textures or poor geometry. So this is a pretty good low effort hack if you just want to blur something out slightly so that it's not as noticeable and focus people's attention elsewhere. Bit of misdirection. Another great example would be a shot like this one where I've got this stone doorway that's just coming down in the frame. And there's a few things in this shot that I don't really want showing up in the foreground, particularly these textures on the left hand side, because they're just not high resolution enough to hold up well. And yes, we can replace textures as we've already discovered, but in the spirit of low effort hacks, what if I just move the camera? I can just move it over to the left, turn the camera like this, so we're still facing the doorway, which is of course the focus of this shot, but I've blocked anything on the left hand side that might have been a little bit distracting and I've just dirtied the frame with the wall. And I've done the same thing in this shot as well, which is a big wide shot, which could have been really difficult if I had a really large area to dress with props, but I've actually just used four or five boulders to dirty the frame around the edge, some cobwebs as well, and now I just have the center part of the frame to worry about. So I've dressed that appropriately, you've got my character in the center, and lit it so that the character is illuminated with other things in darkness, which as we've discovered is a pretty useful tool. So using all of these tricks at once can really speed things up because you have a lot less work to do. The full Treasure of the Mummy short film is gonna be coming to the channel early next year. I'm really excited about releasing it. It's also gonna be the backbone of a full virtual production course I've been putting together called the Virtual Filmmaker's Playbook. And that's gonna be a 10 plus hour workflow guide designed to get you from the beginning to the end of your own films. We've got sections on building your environments, shooting on a green screen, there's mocap sections, character animation, chaos destruction and Niagara fluids, a detailed compositing section, and also the cherry on top, how to match the lighting from your unreal environment to your real world studio set, scientifically and accurately. And because the course is based around using Lightcraft Jet Set, anyone who takes the course is gonna get three months free of Jet Set Cine, their higher tier. We'll also have Rococo free trials and discount codes as well. So it's gonna be insane. This thing is coming out early next year. And if you want to be notified when it actually launches, you'll want to sign up to the mailing list in the description below and subscribe to the channel just in case because some people are going to get this course completely for free and those are going to be the ones who are most alert. So in the meantime, happy holidays. Hope you have a good break and I'll see you in the new year.